Hello from Halifax. This is Jo with Jo to the World Creations and today we're going to be making my easy tote bag crochet pattern. I'm really excited to share this crochet tote bag pattern with you and we're going to be getting right to the video tutorial. All the details such as the hook size and everything you'll need to know about this pattern and all the written instructions are available for free on my website or you can purchase the ad free print ready PDF and there are links to both in the description below this video. All right, let's get started. The yarn that you see in the photos as well as the exact amount of yarn required and the brand and the color is all included in the written instructions. For this video tutorial, I'm using Burnett Super Value in the color Lush. For this pattern, we are going to be using two strands of yarn held together the entire time. So with your two skeins, you just take strands from each of them and you treat them as you would as if you were crocheting with just one strand. And I'll show you exactly how to do this as we get started. So with two strands held together, we're gonna start by making a slip knot. There's lots of different ways. I make my slip knot by making a loop and then pulling through another loop, tightening it up and putting that loop onto my hook. And always making sure I have an approximate eight inch tail. And with these two strands together, you just simply treat them like one. And it's okay if they cross a little bit, they don't need to be absolutely lined all the time. The point is to create a thicker fabric. So if your strands cross and um, and are not perfectly always straight and parallel, that's absolutely okay. You just treat them as one strand and crochet normally. With our slip knot now made, we are going to chain 31. One, two, three. And do you see how my strands are getting a little bit crossed? And that's absolutely okay. You just go ahead and do this for the whole pattern. So I've made three, four, and I'm gonna keep going until I have 31 chains made. So you can come back to the video when you have 31 chains complete. With 31 chains now made, we're gonna begin round one. And we're gonna start round one by working into the second chain from the hook. So I just removed my hook the first chain from the hook is right here. So the second chain is the next chain. And we're gonna insert our hook into the top loop and make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And when I say we're gonna insert our hook into the top loop, that means working under both strands of that top loop. So working into the second chain from the hook inserting our hook under both strands of that top loop. So I have two strands and now we are going to single crochet. So that's our first single crochet made in the round. And in this pattern, we are always going to place a stitch marker in the top of that first stitch made. So we're gonna insert this stitch marker or safety pin into the top of the stitch, meaning to go under the top loops so that the stitch marker is in the top of the stitch. And we're gonna do this for the first stitch of every round to indicate which is the very first stitch made in the round. Now we are going to make single crochet stitches across the next 28 chains. So one single crochet in each of the next 28 chains. So we've made our first single crochet in the second chain from the hook, in the next chain in the same place underneath the top two loops, 
we are going to single crochet. And that is our first of 28 that we're going to complete across all the chains to the end, except there'll be one chain left at the end when we work away all the way across. So that was one. Let's go to the next one under the top two loops, make our second of 28. And the next one will be the third. So you can go ahead and put me on pause and make 28 single crochet stitches in each chain across. You will have one chain left at the end. So you go ahead and do that. We'll come back and do that last part together. So I've just finished making 28 single crochet stitches. Now that did not include that first single crochet stitch we made, the one with the stitch marker in it. So that first one was actually the, the first single crochet stitch we made, and then we made 28. So we have 29 single crochet stitches so far. And at the end here, we have one last chain to work into. Okay, just to point out, there's the slip knot that we made and we are going to work into this very last single or this very last chain. And in that last chain, we are going to make five single crochet stitches into the same chain. So working into the same place under the top loops, inserting your hook and let's make our first single crochet stitch of five. That's one. I'm going to do two, three, always working in the same spot, four, and five. With these five single crochet stitches made in the last chain, you may notice a gap here. And it's okay, we can use these ends when we're finished uh, to close that gap when we weave in our ends. So really don't worry about that. We're now going to be working along the other side of the chain. And we are going to be inserting our hook underneath the next space. Just be careful that you're not going to work into that same space that we've made our five single crochet stitches going under the next space. So you can kind of see an X here and there's a, a gap and that's where we're going to insert our hook in single crochet. And just to point out before I put my hook back on um, where the next space is, see how there's a bit of an X here? So you go under that X and you'll see a gap space that you can work into. So we're going to be making 28 single crochet stitches into the other side of the chain all the way across until there's one chain left. So once again, don't work into this, this chain that we've already made our five into. We are, we are going along the other side across the top and finding that next space. And we're going to single crochet into that next space. So we've made one single crochet there. So you can now see the difference between where I've made my single crochet stitch first compared to where we made the five before. And now moving to the next space, you can stretch your work a little bit to see where these gaps are. And working into the next space, we're going to single crochet. So that's two so far out of our 28. Moving into the next space, we're going to single crochet. So that's three. And we're going to do this all the way across until there is one chain left. So go ahead and make 28 single crochet stitches across and then come back to the video. If you need to count, just remember that you've made five in the, the last chain from the other side. So those don't count. Your first one is the first single crochet you made on your own and count that to start the 28 single crochet stitches on the other side. So go ahead and make 28 all the way across. There'll be one chain left and we'll do that together. So after 
we made five single crochets in the last chain. From the other side, we've now made 28 single crochet stitches all the way across, and you should have one chain left. So where our stitch marker is, that's the where we started. So there should be one last chain space to work into. And into that space or the chain, we are going to make two single, single crochets in the same spot. So one and two. And at this point, you can count your stitches and you want to ensure that you have 64 stitches made in this round. So you're going to go count all the way around, make sure you have 64 stitches with the stitch with the stitch marker being your first stitch or the last stitch, however you're counting, but that's how you can see the difference between the last stitch and the first stitch. So make sure that you have 64 stitches in the round. And to finish round 1, we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch, the stitch with the stitch marker. So we can take that stitch marker out, just remembering exactly <clears throat> where that was, and we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Slip stitch to join the round. To start round two, we're going to chain one. And we are not going to turn our work. So we are going to continue working in the exact same direction that we have been. We're not turning, we're not flipping, we're just gonna continue working in the same direction. In this very first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain, we are going to make, we're going to make two single crochets into this first stitch. But in the first of two, we're going to place that stitch marker. So let's do this just one at a time. So chain one into the first stitch, which is attached to this chain. We are going to make a single crochet stitch. And we're going to put our stitch marker into that first stitch. Into the top, under the top loops. There we go. Now into the same stitch, we're going to make another single crochet stitch. So into the same first stitch, we make another one. Now we are going to single crochet in the next 29 stitches. Okay, so just across the next 29 stitches, make one single crochet in each. So that's one of 29. 2 of 29, 3 of 29. Keep going until you have 29 single crochet stitches and come back to the video. So I've just made 29 single crochet stitches and that's not including the two single crochet stitches we made to start the, the round here. So our first stitch has a stitch marker in, then we made another stitch in the same place and then we made 29. So we have actually 31 stitches made in the round so far. Now what we're going to do is make two single crochet stitches in the next three stitches. So two in the next, two in the one after that, and two in the one after that. So working into the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches in the same stitch and then make two single crochet stitches in the next stitch and two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. Now we are going to make a single crochet stitch in each of the next 29 stitches. So there's one of 29, two of 29, three of 29. And you go ahead and make 29 single crochet stitches and come back to the video. 
So after completing 29 single crochet stitches, you should have two stitches left. This next one here and the one after that. And th these two are very, very confusing. And that's why it helps to always have a stitch marker here. This one attached to the first stitch was the chain one we made to start the round. And this stitch beside it is a slip stitch. So these aren't really stitches that we're ever gonna be working into. So really you have two stitches left and into these two stitches, we're going to make two single crochet stitches and then another two single crochet stitches. So to finish the round, in the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches, one and two. And in the last stitch, make two single crochet stitches, one and two. At the end of round two, you should have a total of 70 stitches made. In this pattern, the chain one that we made to start does not count as a stitch, and neither did that slip stitch. So all we're doing is counting the single crochet stitches that we made all the way around and you should have a total of 70 single crochet stitches all the way around. To complete the round, we are going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet stitch that we made, the one with the, slip, the, the stitch marker. So we are going to take the stitch marker out, but remembering to note where that stitch was, and into the top of that stitch, we are going to slip stitch to complete the round. At the end of round two, your work should measure approximately 12.5 inches long and 1.5 inches wide. Now the size of your bag doesn't need to be exact. If it's slightly larger, if it's slightly smaller, it's absolutely okay. Now we're going to start round three. And to start round three, we're going to chain one and we're gonna work into this very first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. And into that first stitch, we are going to make two single crochet stitches. But once again, in that first single crochet stitch, we're gonna put a stitch marker. So let's do this one step by step. Let's make one single crochet stitch into this first stitch. Pause here, put in our stitch marker. And in the same stitch, we're gonna make another single crochet stitch. So make two single crochet stitches into that first stitch. And then we're also gonna make two single crochet stitches into the next stitch. So working into the next stitch, make your first single crochet and your second. Now we're going to make one single crochet stitch in each of the next 30 stitches. So here's one of 30, two of 30, three of 30, and you're gonna do this until you have a total of 30 single crochet stitches across. And just a reminder, that's not including the two single crochet stitches we made in the first two stitches. So count just from your making one single crochet across the next 30 and come back to the video when you have 30 completed. With 30 single crochet stitches now completed, we're gonna work into the next five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, and into each of these, we're gonna make two single crochet stitches into each of the next five stitches. So for the next stitch, we're going to make one, and then two single crochet stitches in the first of five, 
in the next one. One and two, that's two of five. One and two, that's three of five. One and two, that's four and five of five. And then the last, the fifth stitch, one and two. Now we're going to make one single crochet stitch in each of the next 30 stitches. So I think you've got the hang of this by now. That's one of 30, two of 30, three of 30. So go ahead, make 30 and come back to the video. With 30 single crochet stitches now complete, you should have three stitches left. And just a reminder of these confusing stitches. So we have the first stitch here, then we had the chain one, and we have a slip stitch. The chain one and the slip stitch don't count as stitches. We're not working into those. So you're only working into the last three stitches. And in each of the last three stitches, we're going to make two single crochet stitches in each of them. So the next stitch, make one and two into the same stitch, into the next stitch, one and two, and in the last stitch, one and two. At the end of round three, you should have a total of 80 stitches all the way around. And if you notice your the bottom here is, is floppy, it's okay, I promise it'll, it'll straighten out as we expand on it. Um, so yeah, count your stitches all the way around. Only count this, the single crochet stitches, not the chains. So your first stitch that you could count is the one with the stitch marker, that's stitch one, and go all the way around to make sure you have 80 stitches in the round. And to complete round three, slip stitch into the top of the first stitch made. So we'll remove the stitch marker and slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch to complete the round. To start round four, we're gonna chain one. And once again, we're never gonna turn at the end of a round. The instructions for the beginning of this round are to make two single crochet stitches in the next stitch and then one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. And to repeat that twice, which means in the following stitch, we're gonna make two single crochet stitches and in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. But let's do this step by step. In the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain, we're going to make our first single crochet stitch. And into the first single crochet stitch, since it's the first stitch of the round, we're going to place our stitch marker. And now we're going to make another single crochet stitch into the same stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to make one single crochet stitch. And that completes the instructions a total of one once. And we're gonna repeat those in total twice. So we've done two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch in the next. Let's repeat that again. So in the very next stitch, we're gonna make two single crochet stitches. One and two. In the next stitch, we're going to make one single crochet stitch. Now we are going to single crochet in each of the next 30 stitches. So in the next stitch, we're going to make our first of 30 single crochet, then second of 30, third of 30, and you're going to go ahead and make a total of 30 single crochet stitches and then come back to the video. With 30 single crochet stitches now complete, so next what we're going to do is follow the following instructions a total of five times. And here are the instructions. 
In the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches. In the next stitch, make one single crochet stitch. And we're gonna do that a total of five times. So, in the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches. So one and two. And in the next stitch, make one single crochet stitch. So that's one of five completed. Now, two in the next stitch, one in the next. That's two of five completed. Two in the next stitch, one in the next stitch. That's three of five completed. In the next stitch, two single crochet stitches complete in the next one one and that's four of five completed in the next stitch make two single crochet stitches one two and finally make one single crochet stitch so now we've just completed those instructions a total of five times now we're going to single crochet in each of the next 30 stitches so here's one of 30, two of 30, and three of 30. So you go ahead and make 30 single crochet stitches and come back to the video. After making 30 single crochet stitches, you should have a total of six stitches left. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this little one here is the slip stitch and there's the chain one that we don't work into. So working into the last six stitches, we're going to be doing the same repeat instructions that we did early in the round, where in the next stitch, we make two single crochets. In the next stitch, one single crochet. And we're gonna repeat that three times. So in the next stitch, we're going to make two single cro crochet stitches. There's one and two. In the next stitch, one single crochet. So that's the instructions that we've repeated once so far. Let's do it two more times. In the next stitch, single crochet twice in the same stitch. In the next stitch, make one single crochet. We have two stitches left. We're going to repeat this one last time. Two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. And in the last stitch, we are going to make one single crochet stitch. At the end of round four, you should have a total of 90 stitches all the way around. And that chain one does not count as a stitch. So counting from your first stitch, which is the one with the stitch marker, count to make sure you have 90 stitches. And to complete round four, we're gonna slip stitch into the top of the first stitch made. So we'll remove the stitch marker and slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch to complete the round. At this point in the pattern, my work measures 14 inches long and three inches wide. Once again, it's okay if your bag is slightly different. It doesn't need to be exact. To start round five, we are going to chain one. And once again, we're not gonna turn. The instructions for this round begin by following a set of instructions in brackets that we're gonna repeat. And these instructions are to make two single crochet stitches in the first stitch, and then make one single crochet in the next two stitches. So two in the next stitch and then one, one. And we're gonna repeat that a total of two times to start. Let's do this step by step. So in this first stitch, the stitch attached to the chain, we're going to make two single crochet stitches. But on that first one, we're going to put our stitch marker into the top of that stitch and then we're going to make another single crochet stitch into that same stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to make a single crochet stitch, just one, 
and in the next stitch we're going to make one single crochet stitch. So that completes the instructions in the brackets a total of one time or once so far. We're going to do that again. So in the next stitch we're going to make two single crochet stitches. One, two, and then we're going to make a single crochet stitch in each of the next two stitches, but just one. So one in the next stitch and one in the next stitch. And now that completes the set of instructions in brackets a total of two times. Now we are going to single crochet in each of the next 30 stitches. So this is one of 30, two of 30, three of 30. So you go ahead and make 30 and come back to the video. Now we're going to follow the following instructions a total of five times. And here are the instructions. In the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches. In the next two stitches, make one single crochet stitch. And we're going to repeat that five times. So two in the next and then one and one. So let's do this together. In the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches and then single crochet in the next two stitches. So that's one single crochet in the next and one single crochet in the next. So now we've, we've, we've repeated that set of instructions once. We're going to do it a total of five times. So in the next stitch, two single crochet stitches, and then one single crochet, and one single crochet, and that's two. When I say, and that's two, that's two of five times that we're repeating those instructions. In the next stitch, two single crochet stitches, in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. In the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. That's three. In the next stitch, two single crochet stitches. In the next stitch, one. In the next stitch, one. That's four. And the last time, in the next stitch, two single crochet stitches. In the next stitch, one single crochet and in the next stitch, one single crochet. And that's repeating those instructions five times. Now we're going to make a single crochet stitch in each of the next 30 stitches. So I think you're an expert at this part by now. That was one of 30, two of 30, three of 30. Go ahead and make 30 and come back to the video. With our 30 single crochet stitches now complete, you should have a total of nine stitches left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That slip stitch doesn't count and that chain one doesn't count. So into these next nine stitches, we're gonna repeat what we did earlier in the round. So in the next stitch, two single crochet stitches, and then a single crochet in the next, and a single crochet in the next. And we're, we're gonna repeat that three times. So in the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches. In the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. And in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. So that's once that we've repeated it. Let's do this again. Two single crochet stitches in the same stitch. And then in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. And in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. So we have three stitches left. In the next stitch, two single crochet stitches. In the next stitch, in the next stitch, one single crochet stitch. And in the very last stitch, one single crochet stitch. There we go. At the end of this round, you should have a total of 100 stitches made. We don't count the chains. So start with your stitch that has the stitch marker and make sure that you have 100 stitches all the way around. To finish the round, we're going to remove our stitch marker and slip stitch into the top of that 
first stitch, slip stitch to join. And that completes round five. To start round six, we're gonna chain one, we never turn. In that first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain, we are going to single crochet. And we are going to place that stitch marker into that first stitch. And we are going to be making a total of five single crochet stitches to start, one in each stitch. And this first stitch that we just made counts as the first of those five. So we've just made one single crochet stitch. We wanna make a total of five. So that's one. In the next stitch, make another. That's two. In the next stitch, make another. That's three. In the next stitch, four. And in the next stitch, five. So now we have five single crochet stitches made. In the very next stitch, we are going to make two single crochet stitches into that next stitch. So one, and then make another one in the same stitch, and that's two. Now we're going to make a single crochet stitch in each of the next 36 stitches. So working across, just one in each stitch. In the next stitch, make one. So that's one of 36. Two will be two of 36. Three is three of 36. So you go ahead and come back to the video when you have 36 single crochet stitches made. With our 36 single crochet stitches now complete, we're going to repeat the following instructions. I'll point out what we're doing here. In the next stitch, we're going to make two single crochet stitches. And then we're gonna make a single crochet stitch in each of the next five stitches. Did I do that right? So there's two, then one, two, three, four, five. One single crochet in each of those next five stitches. And we're gonna repeat those instructions a total of three times. So in the next stitch, we're going to make two single crochet stitches one and two. Now we're going to make a single crochet stitch, just one, in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. So now we've repeated those instructions once. We're going to go do it two more times. In the next stitch, make two single crochet stitches, one and two, then make one single crochet stitch in each of the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we've repeated those instructions twice. We're gonna do it once more. In the very next stitch, make two single crochet stitches. One, two. In the next five stitches, we're gonna make one single crochet in each of those five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to single crochet in the next 34 stitches. So just working one single crochet into each of the next 34 stitches. So there's one of 34, two of 34, three of 34. Come back to the video and you have 34 stitches made. After making your 34 single crochet stitches, you should have a total of six stitches left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This little one here does not count as a slip, or does not count because that's a slip stitch and there's the chain one. So with six stitches left, what we're going to do is in the next stitch, we're going to make two single crochet stitches in the same stitch. So one and two. 
and then we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So one single crochet in the next stitch, that's one, in the next stitch make another, that's two, next one, single crochet, that's three, and in the next stitch single crochet, and that's four. Then we're going to skip the next stitch. So we're actually not gonna work into anything else in this round. To count our stitches, we are going to make sure that there are 104 stitches all the way around. And again, start with the stitch with your stitch marker, don't count the chain, and just ensure you have 104 stitches. And to complete the round, we are going to remove the stitch marker from the first stitch and slip stitch into the top of that first stitch to join. So we're not doing anything else here. There's gonna be a little bit of a gap, um, but it's gonna be hardly noticeable. So now we're just gonna slip stitch into the top of that stitch here. So you can really, you really can't see the gap. And that completes round six. After round six, my measurements are 16 inches long and four inches wide in the middle. The ends are a little wider at about 4.5 inches on both ends. To start round seven, we're going to chain one. And once again, we are not gonna turn. We're gonna work into the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. And for this round, what we're gonna be doing is single crocheting all the way around, but we're going to be working into the back loop only. So these are the loops and if we only had one strand that we were working with it would only be one loop, only the one back loop. But because we're working with two strands we actually have two loops that we're going to be working under. We're going to insert our hook only under the two back loops and we're going to single crochet normally. So we're ignoring this front loop. Norm like if we were just making a regular single crochet, we'd insert a hook under all the top loops. But for this round only, we're inserting our hook under the back loop only. And because there's two strands, it's the back loops. So we're gonna insert a hook and single crochet into each back loop all the way around. So chain one, we're not turning. Working into the very first stitch, we're inserting a hook under the back loop only. And now we're just single crocheting normally. Since this is our first single crochet stitch of the round, we're going to put our stitch marker in. And then we're going to do the exact same thing in the next stitch. Working in the back loops only single crochet. See how I'm not touching the front loops, only working into the back loops and single crochet. So you're going to do this all the way around and come back to the video once you've single crocheted in the back loop only all the way around and we will join the round together. So I've made my single crochet stitches at the back loops only all the way around and I have one stitch left. And I wanted to point out what this looks like because it can get confusing. This here is my last stitch. This, the thing next to it is the slip stitch. Okay, so we're not gonna work in that and we're not working in the chain one. So my last stitch here is this one and I'm going to once again work into the back loops just like I've done all the way around. So make my single crochet into that. And at the end of this round, and or if you're confused about where which one's a stitch, count and make sure you have 104 single crochet stitches all the way around. So this is your first and then your last one should be the last one that you just made. And that's 104. To complete the round, we are going to remove the slips, uh, the stitch marker from the first stitch and we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, but we are going to be working into both loops of that stitch. 
So for the whole round, we've been working into the back loops only, but from now on, for the rest of the pattern, we're working into both loops normally. So we're gonna slip stitch by working into the top of that stitch under the all top loops and then slip stitch. And that completes round seven. So this now completes the bottom of the bag. We are going to now start the bag body. We're not gonna fasten off, but the round numbers are going to reset. So we're gonna start back at round one as we start the bag body, just to make it easier to count the, the rounds um, for the body, the bag body or the sides of the, of the bag. <clears throat> Another thing I wanted to note is as you start to work on the bag body, you're going to notice that the top here, so this is the top that we've been working, this is the, the, the side that's been facing up this entire time as we've made the bottom. Well, what's gonna happen as we start to work on the body is that this is actually going to be facing down. So it's going to be on the bottom outside of the bag. And how this is going to happen is you don't need to do anything. I'm just pointing this out. It's because we worked into the back loops. So that last round we did is really setting us up that we can now work um, on the body with this top from the bottom facing down. So don't worry, I'll show you exactly. I just wanted to point all this out. Uh, so now we are going to start the bag body. Um, we're gonna start round one of the bag body. So you don't need to do anything. You don't, we're not gonna turn. You don't need to flip unless it's easier for you to work like this. Right now I'm just keeping my work exactly how I have been. So for round one of the bag body, we're gonna start by chaining one. We're gonna work into the very first stitch, the stitch that's attached to that chain, and we're gonna single crochet. Since it's the first single crochet in the round, we're gonna put our stitch marker in the top of that stitch. What we're going to be doing next is repeating the same three things all the way around. We are going to chain one, and we're gonna skip the next, stitch, the next stitch. So normally we'd work into the very next stitch, but from now on we're gonna skip this next stitch. So we've chained one, we're gonna skip the next stitch, and in the following stitch, we're going to single crochet. And every time we chain one and skip a stitch, this is creating a chain one space that we're gonna work into on the next round. So nothing we need to do at this point, I just wanna point it out that we've created our first chain one space right here. So let's continue these instructions. Chain one, skip the next stitch, in the next stitch, single crochet. Another chain one space has just been created. Chain one, skip the next stitch, in the next stitch, single crochet. Once again, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. So you're gonna do this all the way around until there is one stitch left. So just keep repeating, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and come back to the video when you're nearing the end of the round and I'll point out exactly how to finish off when there's this one stitch left. So I'm nearing the end of the round here and I'm going to just be repeating the same thing all the way around until there's one stitch left, but I'll show you exactly what I do. So I've just made a single crochet, so still repeating the instructions of chaining one, skipping the next stitch, in the next stitch, single crochet. 
right now I have three stitches left. One, two, three. These ones here don't count. That's the slip stitch and the chain one. So we're not working into those. So I have three stitches left. So I'm going to repeat the instructions one last time. So I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and then single crochet in the next stitch. So I have one stitch left. And that's when I stop repeating the instructions that we've followed all the way around. To complete the round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one chain one. I'm going to skip this last stitch and I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch made. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and I have a chain one made there but I'm not doing anything else. I'm just slip stitching into that first stitch made. And that completes round one. For counting stitches in this round, we are only going to count the single crochet stitches. And it may actually be easier for you to count them. Um, what we've done throughout the remainder of the pattern is we've always counted the stitches with our stitch marker still in it but I just want to show you how to complete the round to make sure you don't forget that last chain one there. But I want to also show you how to count the stitches. So I'm backing up a little bit. And we are going to count only the single crochet stitches that we've made in the round. We are not counting the chain ones that we've made. So here's my first single crochet stitch that I've made. So that counts as the first stitch. We don't count the chain one, we count the next single, cro single crochet stitch as our next stitch. So that's one, two single crochet stitches, three, I'm not gonna go all the way around, I'm just pointing out when we're counting, how you're gonna count them is only by counting these single crochet stitches. And you're gonna count all the way around, making sure that you have 52 single crochet stitches. So that last stitch is the 50, the 52nd, uh, the, it's stitch number 52 is your last stitch. So make sure you have 52 single crochet stitches around and then make sure you've chained one at the, at, after you've finished your last, your 52nd single crochet stitch. And then to complete the round, you're going to slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch to join. To start round two, the first thing we're going to do is work directly into the first chain one space. So if you recall in the previous round, we made a single crochet stitch and then chained one and skipped a stitch which created the first chain one space. In this first chain one space, we are going to make a slip stitch. So normally we chain one to begin around for this. We're gonna go right from slip stitching. We Well, to complete round one, we made a slip stitch to join. And the first thing we're going to do is slip stitch now into that first chain one space. So going right into that chain one space, underneath the chain one, we're just grabbing our yarn and pulling it through the loops on our hook to slip stitch. Okay, that's the first thing we do in round two. Now we're going to chain one. And into that same chain one space where we made our slip stitch, we're going to single crochet. and that counts as the first single crochet stitch of the round. So we're going to put on our stitch marker. So we've slip stitched into that chain one space, chain one and made a single crochet stitch into the same chain one space. Now let's look for the next chain one space. Remember, chain one space was created 
anytime we made a chain one stitch and skipped a stitch, it created a gap area, gap space, chain one space that we're gonna work into. We're not working into the tops of stitches, we're working into the space. So now that we've made our first single crochet stitch of the round, we're gonna repeat the following instructions. Chain one, and in the next chain one space, which is the space here between the two single crochet stitches, we're gonna single crochet. And what we've just done by chaining one and working into the next chain one space, we've created a new chain one space that we will be working to working into in the next round, okay? So the rest of the pattern is simply chain one, working into the next chain one space, and you can stretch out your work and you can find the space in between the two single crochet stitches under a chain one, and that's where you're gonna work into. So I've single crocheted in the last chain one space, I chained one, now working in the next chain one space, I'm going to single crochet. Chain one, working into the next chain one space, I'm gonna single crochet. And that is what you're gonna do all the way around. So chain one, working in the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one, in the next single crochet space, or in the next chain one space, single crochet. Chain one, in the next chain one space, single crochet. So you go and do that all the way around. And at this point, you might, might wanna find it easier just to adjust your work. You're not flipping, you're not turning or anything. You're just positioning your work so that, that's what I'm talking about, from the top of the bottom is now facing down. So that you're really, as you can see, you're starting to really work on the sides. And it's, that might be easier to see. So just, like I said, I didn't turn, I didn't do anything other than just adjust my work to make it easier to work into. Chain one, in the next chain one space, single crochet. Chain one, in the next single crochet, or in the next chain one space, single crochet. So you do that all the way around and come back to the video when uh, you're nearing the end of the round and we will do that together. So I'm coming up on the end of the round here and I have one last chain one space to work into. But it can get confusing to see if you have another chain one space. However, um, I have a great tip for you to ensure that you're starting and ending in the right place. So I know I have um, one chain one space left to work into, but if you are confused of whether you have one or two or more, or should you be working into this, what you should do is count your single crochet stitches around. And they've become more obvious as we keep doing the body here. So you can see this is a single crochet stitch. You see these, this is a single crochet stitch all the way around. At the end of the round, you should have 52 single crochet stitches completed. So the one with the stitch marker is the first, and then your last one will be your 52nd single crochet stitch. So if you're ever in doubt of whether you've made the right number of stitches, just count your single crochet stitches and ensure you're finishing with 52 single crochet stitches. So I just counted and that was single crochet stitch 51. So I know I have one more to do. So with one more to do, I've just single crocheted here and I'm gonna chain one and single crochet into my last chain one space. After finishing round two, we are not going to chain one. After your last single crochet stitch, simply slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch made. So you remove your marker, you're not chaining one. 
going directly from the single crochet stitch to slip stitching into the top of the first stitch made. I'm hoping you can see this. Is that better? Just uh, making sure you can see it. Okay, so now I'm slip stitching into that first stitch made and that is completing round two. And once again, um, making sure you have 52 single crochet stitches made all the way around. To start round three, we are going to chain one. We're never gonna turn, so we're gonna chain one to start round three. Next, we're going to make a single crochet stitch in the very first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. So we're going to single crochet, and since that's the first single crochet stitch of the round, we're gonna put in our stitch marker. Now we're gonna repeat almost exactly what we did with round two in terms of the repeating of instructions. The only difference between the two rounds is how you start the round and how you end the round. But the you, you really do the exact same thing while working all around. It's just the beginning and the end are slightly different. So what we're going to do is chain one and working into the next chain one space, which is the space in between the two single crochet stitches from the previous round under a chain one, working right into that space, we're going to single crochet. And we're simply going to chain one and make a single crochet in the next chain one space. We're gonna do that all the way around. Chain one, work in the next chain one space and single crochet. So you go ahead, chain one and single crochet all the way around. And when you're nearing the end of the round, come back to the video and we'll finish the round together. So I am nearing the end of round three. I've just made a single crochet stitch and I have one last chain one space to work into. And just like with round two, it can be tricky to tell whether you have two chain one spaces to work into or one space left to work into. So I just counted my single crochet stitches all the way around, starting with the first single crochet made in the round, and I have 51 single crochet stitches made. So I know I have one more left to make because at the end of round three, we should have a total of 52 single crochet stitches. So I know that I have one last chain one space to work into. So after my last single crochet stitch, I'm going to chain one and work into the next, which is the last single crochet, uh, uh, chain one space that we're gonna single crochet into. So into that last chain one space, I'm going to single crochet. Now, this last space here may look like a chain one space, but because there's a slight gap, but this is not a chain one space. And again, the easiest thing to do is just count your stitches. This was my 52nd stitch, single crochet stitch, so I know that's the last stitch I need to make. To complete this round, we are going to chain one. So remember, round two and round three are slightly different, after completing your last single crochet stitch from round three, we are going to chain one, and now we are going to slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch that we made, the one with the stitch marker. So we're gonna remove the stitch marker, making sure we've made a chain one, and now slip stitch into the top of that first stitch to complete the round. After round three, my work is measuring approximately one and a half inches high or from the 
the ground here. And it's approximately, it's going to be hard to show you, but I can tell you that it's approximately 16 inches long. For the rest of the bag body, we are going to be repeating round two, round three, round two, round three. Let's repeat those two rounds once more, a little faster this time, but especially pointing out how to do the beginning and the end of both rounds. So I just finished a round three. Now we're going to be repeating round two. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is to work into the first chain one space. So that's the space in between the first two single crochet stitches underneath the chain one. And we're going to be working directly into that space. So to begin round two, which is repeating round two, we're going to slip stitch into that first chain one space. So we simply slip stitch into that first chain one space. Now we chain one and make a single crochet stitch into that same chain one space. And since it's the first single crochet stitch of the round, we place our stitch marker in the top of that stitch. Now for the rest of the round, we simply chain one. Working into the next chain one space, we single crochet, chain one, and single crochet in the next chain one space. And we do that all the way around. So you go ahead, do that all the way around, and we'll finish round two, repeating round two together. So I'm almost finished repeating round, round two, and I've counted my single crochet stitches, and I have 51 stitches so far. And I know that I need 52 stitches for the round. So I have one last chain one space to work into. So after my last single crochet stitch here, I'm going to chain one and make my final single crochet stitch in the final chain one space. At the end of repeating a round two, we do not chain one after our final our stitch number 52, single crochet stitch number 52, we do not chain one. We're going to work directly into the first stitch made. So we remove our stitch marker from that first stitch and we're gonna slip stitch into that. There's no chain one after the final single crochet. So we slip stitch into the first stitch of the round to join and that completes us repeating a round two. Now let's repeat round three. To start repeating round three, we're going to chain one and we're gonna single crochet into the very first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. And since that's our first single crochet stitch of the round, we are going to place our stitch marker in the top of that stitch. Now we will repeat what we do all the way around, which is simply chaining one, working into the first chain one space. We're going to single crochet, chain one, working into the next chain one space. We're going to single crochet, chain one, and keep working into each chain one space all the way around. You go ahead and do that and come back to the video and we'll finish a repeating round three together. So I'm nearing the end of repeating round three and I've counted my single crochet stitches and I have 51 single crochet stitches so far. So I, need, I know I need to do one more. So I'm gonna complete the round by doing my last one. After my uh, 51st single crochet stitch, I'm going to make a chain one and in the final chain one space here I'm going to single crochet. Since we're working on a round three after our final single crochet stitch on a round three 
we chain one. And now we slip stitch into the top of the first stitch made to complete the round. So working into the top of that first single crochet stitch, slip stitch to complete the round. In case you're wondering why rounds two and three are slightly different to begin and end, it's to try to make the seam, the place that we join the round, as straight as possible. So we just completed a round three. Now you're going to complete a round two, and then a round three, and a round two, and then a round three, until the height of your bag is approximately 11 inches. One very important note is that you want to end after a round two. So after repeating round two, round three, round two, round three, make sure your final round before ending the bag body is a round two. And you want your bag to be as close to 11 inches as possible. That's approximately 32 rounds. If you go any higher or shorter, when you go to do the straps and make the straps um, as per the instructions, if it's not approximately 11 inches, the straps might not be the right, uh, might not be long enough and might not um, work in terms of exactly how I've instructed them to be. So if you just wanna follow the pattern exactly, make sure your height of your bag is approximately 11 inches. So once the height of your bag is 11 inches and you've finished with a round two, now in this example, I've just finished a round three, but let's pretend I've just finished a round two and the height of my bag is 11 inches. At this point, you simply fasten off by cutting your yarn. You can just leave about an eight inch tail and then you fasten off by pulling the ends through the loop and tightening everything up and then use your yarn needle to weave in all your loose ends. I found with this pattern, it was fine for the bag body to put both ends into the yarn needle at the same time and weave them through together. Um, you can experiment to see which way works best for you. But remember that gap we had at the beginning when we were working on the bottom? Um, you can just use your yarn needle and weave in your ends to tighten up that gap. So just to close the gap, you'll just go around the, the gap that was created and you just go around until you can tighten it up. So I get closer to the gap and then I'm just going to maybe go through until I can close that gap. So I've just tightened up the gap like that. So once you've closed that gap, you can just try to hide these ends underneath the stitch. And it is on the inside of the bag, so it's not very noticeable. And I just cut a short little amount there. And you'll do the same for the ends at the top and just weave them into the side on the inside of the bag. So for the straps, we're still going to be using two strands of yarn held together. So still using your two skeins, you grab the two ends and to start the straps for both straps, we're going to be making two of these, but for the first strap, and we're going to do the exact same thing for both, we're going to leave an approximate 30 inch tail and we're going to use these tails to attach the straps to the inside of the bag. So you want to leave a very long tail to start. So quickly measure and make sure you have at least 30 inches of your tail before you start um, with your slip knot. So then with our two strands of yarn, we're going to make a slip knot and put that slip knot on our hook. Now we are going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, now we're gonna start row one. 
this time we're going to work in the third chain from the hook. So that's the first, that's the second, and this is the third chain. And we're going to be working into the top loop again under the top two strands of the third chain from the hook. So we're going to single crochet in the third chain from the hook. And a quick note, by working in the third chain from the hook, what we're doing is we're skipping the first and second chain. And that's going to create a chain two space that we're going to be working into on the following row. So just that's an important note that we'll be talking about later. So we've just single crocheted into the third chain from the hook. Now we are going to chain one and we're going to skip the next stitch. In the following stitch, we are going to, actually I should say chain, shouldn't I? We're going to skip the next chain and in the following chain, single crochet. That's going to create a chain one space that we'll work into on the next row. Now we're going to chain one, skip the next chain, and in the last chain, single crochet into that last chain. And that completes row one. You should have a total of three single crochet stitches now complete. One, two, three. To start row two, we're going to chain two and turn. One, two, there's our chaining two, and now we're going to turn. We are going to single crochet in the first chain one space. The first chain one space is the the space between the two single crochet stitches from the previous row underneath a chain one. So it's this space right in here that we're going to work into. And into that chain one space, we're going to single crochet. Now we're going to chain one and single crochet in the next chain one space. And finally, we're going to make one last chain one and we're going to single crochet into the chain two space that was created when we single crocheted in the third chain from the hook that created our first chain two space and it gets easier after this time, but it is hard to see. So there is a space in between the last single crochet stitch and it's under these chains here. So stretch out your work, it can be tight and this is the area you want to work into. So we've just chained one and we're going to single crochet into that last chain two space. At the end of row two, we have a total of three single cro crochet stitches now complete. The chain two that started the row does not count as a stitch. So we count just the three single crochet stitches. And for the rest of the strap, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We are repeating row two, but let's do row two one more time. So row two we'll be repeating for the rest of the strap is chain two, one, two, and turn. Working into the very first chain one space, we're going to single crochet, chain one, working into the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one, and working into the last chain two space, we are going to single crochet. And this area can be tight, find it does get easier as you work more on the strap. But just know there really there is a space in there 
And it's going to be a little tight, but it's directly after that single crochet stitch there. So then we single crochet and that completes the row. Once again, we can count one, two, three single crochet stitches and we don't count the chain two. So we're going to repeat row two, which is what we just did again, until your strap measures 40 inches long. That's approximately 114 rows. You want to ensure that both straps, because you're going to do this twice, so you're going to make this strap and make it 40 inches long, or approximately 114 rows. And, and once you've reached that size, you're going to fasten off, which means to cut your yarn. And again, you're going to leave a 30 inch long tail. So once you have approximately 30 inches of tail, then you simply bring that yarn through the loop and fasten off. And you're going to make two of these that are both the exact same size. <laughs> Not this small. You want it to be 40 inches long. And then come back to the video and we will attach the straps to the bag. Once your straps are made, first thing you're going to do is take your bag body, take the bag and turn it inside out. So I've just turned my bag inside out to show you here. Then we're gonna take the straps and place them on the bag. And it doesn't matter which side the straps are facing. The most important thing is to make sure that it's not twisted. So you don't wanna have a twisted handle. You wanna make sure that there's no twist when you're lying the straps on the bag. So with your bag inside out, we're gonna place the straps on the bag and I'm gonna show a diagram of the exact positioning of the straps. So there is four inches on either side of the straps and the strap bottoms, the ends of the straps, are approximately one inch away from the bottom of the bag. So it might be hard to tell right now, but this is actually the bottom of my bag. So the ends of my straps are approximately one inch from the bottom. So once you have those, that placement, you're going to take some pins and pin your straps in place. And this will just make it easier to ensure your straps are in the right place. Then you're going to take one strand at a time from your tails, your 30 inch long tails. And this is just demonstrating because I've, I've actually already attached this strap, but I wanna show you exactly how to do this. So I've just attached a 30 inch long tail and I've put one of these tails on a yarn needle and we're simply going to attach the strap to the bag, but only working on the stitches that are facing us. We don't want the yarn to come through the front of the bag. So when you're attaching the strap, you're only gonna be working into the stitches that are closest to us, not through the front of the bag body. And it's a good idea just to be checking regularly and making sure that yarn isn't coming through the front. And this is really just for demonstration purposes because it's really hard to show you underneath of this. But what you're gonna do is sew and attach the strap to the bag body by going all the way up and just weaving in and out, making sure that the yarn doesn't come through the front but you're gonna take one strand at a time and go all the way up and then across. And if you run out of yarn, no problem because you have another strand that you can use. So if, for example, with this yarn, you can go across the bottom and then up the top. So using these two strands of yarn, you want to attach the strap all around um, 
to attach the strap securely to the inside of the bag. And then repeat the same thing for this end of the strap. So you're gonna take one strand and go up, weaving in all the way to the top and over. If you have enough yarn, you can use the same strand to go down. If you don't, you can use the other strand and just make sure that you've gone all the way around. After the straps are attached on this side, you'll flip over your bag and do the exact same thing for the other strap. Once all your straps are securely attached, you can flip the bag back to be the right side out. And now you have a brand new tote bag. I really hope you enjoyed making this tote bag. It's one of my favorite bags ever. It's just so great to use as an everyday shoulder bag, to bring to the market, to go to the beach, or to carry your yarn. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to see your finished tote bags, and I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.